Well, welcome to all of our X fam and everybody tuning in around the country or around the world, no matter where you're watching this from right now. We are just so honored to have you with us this beautiful Sunday in July. We're excited. I hope you're having an incredible summer so far. And welcome to Summer at the X. Amen. Hey, we are in the middle of a series called Summer at the X, where just all summer, uh, we're, we're just diving into the season that we're in and really asking God to help navigate us and lead us through the season. And we're kind of on a road trip right now. And so if you were watching last week, you saw we kind of started into a summer road trip. I don't know if you've got a road trip planned or if you already took one. My family, we already took a road trip this summer. Did you guys take road trips yet? You, did, you took one? No? Yeah, we took a road trip already because why? We had to cancel flights. I had a trip planned this month to fly to California. Canceled. A lot of you know what it's like to have a plans canceled, and so we just kind of are having fun with it. We're like, you know what, let's just take a road trip. And if I could be honest with you, it feels like this entire pandemic is a road trip from hell. Can I get a witness from anybody? It feels like we got into a car four months ago, and we have no idea when we're going to get to our destination. We're not sure if we have enough gas or money to get there. That's what this pandemic feels like. And so I think a lot of us are just in a season of feeling the pain of the pandemic and the uncertainty of the future. And so we said, you know what? Let's go on a road trip through God's word with the people of Israel. Do you know that the nation of Israel went on a road trip when God brought them out of Egypt on their way to the promised land? And they had no idea when they were going to get there because they were following God. And so I just felt like it was appropriate for us to journey with them in this season. Last week, what we saw as they left the Red Sea from one miracle, God took them to a three days journey to a place that was bitter, the the waters of Marah was bitter. They ran out of water. They grumbled. They complained. And God did a miracle because God showed up as their healer. And we learned last week that God wants to show us that he is our healer in a season like this. And little did they know, just a few miles further, they would get to one of the most incredible oasis in the middle of the desert, Pastor Russ, called what? Do you remember? You don't. Aleem. Aleem. There you go. Yes, they got to Aleem. And it was an oasis, springs of water. It was beautiful. And what we learned last week is that the worst thing that we can do with our faith in a season like this is to camp in a bitter place. But we have to keep going, keep walking. I just want to encourage you, no matter where you are, and if you're struggling spiritually today, keep walking with God, keep trusting in God, keep your faith in God, and just keep moving because there will be an end to this. Here's what I can tell you that is really encouraging news, and I'm not a medical doctor, but I can prove this from history. Every pandemic of history that we've ever had always ends at some point. So can we just say, God, we're waiting for it, we're excited, but we're going to keep walking. So if you got your Bible with you, and I want to encourage you, maybe get out your paper Bible. We're going to jump back into this story. We gassed up at Aleem. We're heading on the road. God is uh, out in front. And so we're going to pick up in Exodus chapter 16. So I want to encourage you, get a Bible. Maybe I know you got your phone or your iPad or however you're watching this. Maybe that's a great reason for you to get your paper Bible. I just want to encourage you. It, it's already weird. We're already at home doing something crazy. Let's maybe get our, our Bibles. Let's get our pen out. Let's dive in. I want to encourage you, push away from the digital distractions so that you can receive divine direction today. Amen? Exodus chapter 16, verse 1 says this. The whole Israelite community set out from Elim and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month after they came out of Egypt. So we're a month and a half out of Egypt. And it says in verse 2, In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. This is the part of the road trip 
when your kids are losing their minds, you just had a flat tire, you know, everything is going wrong. That's what's happening here in Exodus chapter 16. They make their way from Elim deeper into the desert. Now, some would say, why leave Elim? Elim had 12 springs. They had these date palm trees. I mean, this is the perfect place that you would want to stay. And here's why. Because God had something better for them than Elim. God wanted to take them to something greater. God had promised them land that was better than what you could get in the desert. And though Elim was good, it wasn't the great that God had planned for them. I don't know if you've ever read that book from, you ever read that book from Jim Collins, From Good to Great? You know what he says? This is a great quote. He says this, good is the enemy of great. And I think sometimes as Christ followers, we settle for good when God has great in store for us. I think sometimes we'd rather camp out in a lean just short of the promises that God has for us. We can't do that. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep going in the season. And so they follow God. But here's the interesting thing. They follow God deeper into the desert. You, you think it was bad at Mara, and then we got to Elim. They go deeper into the desert, and it gets more and more difficult. And listen, what we said at the beginning of this was that the desert or wilderness is a metaphor for whenever we go through hard things. And, and I think a lot of us feel like we're in a wilderness right now. A lot of us feel like we are deep in the desert of this pandemic. And we don't know where, where the promised land is, and we don't know what it looks like to get out of here. But God led them deeper into the desert. Here's the thing that we learn about a desert. This is what we learn about life when we think about we going through a hard experience, and that is a desert is a place of lack. In other words, listen to me, that, that it's in a desert-type experience where, where we're often asking God for provision. They got to Mara, we're out of water. They get to Elim, and then God moves them on, and now they're out of bread. It, it is a place of lack where we're looking for provision. And I believe that some of you watching this right now, that maybe your struggle is the provision. Right now in a season where there's unemployment, it's through the roof, and, and, and you're not even sure how you're going to be able to handle your kids in the school season, and, and you're not sure about your economic status or your job, and there's so much uncertainty. And what happens is when we get into a desert, we start to say, God, are you a provider? And here's what they said. I don't know if you guys got this. Look at this. In verse 2, or verse 3, it, they said, if only, if only... We had died in Egypt. They had this if only mentality. If only. If, if only I knew then what I know now, I would have done it differently. Have any of you had any if only kind of like thoughts in the pandemic? Come on, have any of you thought about it? You know what's hilarious to me, guys? You, you've heard this quote about hindsight because that's what they're doing. They're thinking back to Egypt and they're, they're saying, if only, if only we, we were back in Egypt. They actually said, if only we died in Egypt rather than starve out here. And here's the funny thing about hindsight. You know what people always say about hindsight, if you know it. They always say hindsight is what? How ironic is that? The year from hell. And we say hindsight is 20. We started off this year saying this is the year of vision. Little did we know, we get halfway through Hannah, and it's the year of hindsight where we look back and we say, if only I knew it was going to be like this, I bet you would have done some things differently. That's the way I felt. Can I tell you something I would have done differently? <laughs> if only I knew what it was going to be like right now, back then, six months ago, I would have bought stock in Zoom. Hello? Do you know, Eddie, that Zoom was trading in January at $76 a share? Tucker, guess what it's sharing at now? $266 a share last time I looked. If only I knew it was going to be like this, I would have bought stock in Zoom. If only. Hindsight will always have you looking back, thinking if only. 
If I could just be brutally honest in this moment, and I hesitate to share this because I know when you think about your pastor and you think about a man full of faith and you think about, you know, he's always blazing forward and he's the visionary for our church and, and he's confident and he's this and, and, and I have those things at time. But if I could tell you what the pandemic has done to me in my sight, my, my hindsight, um, I have had these thoughts. If only I knew what it was going to be like right now. I might not have built a brand new building in Canal Winchester. Can I, can I admit that, guys? I know I have faith, but i got to be honest with you. I, I've had these if-only thoughts that if I had only known that we were going to deal with this virus and the division that everything this year has caused within the church, and we're going to try to reach our community, but then now there's the confidence that people don't have because of the virus and going out. I have had these moments where I've told God, if only I knew. If I could have gone back, I would have. If only I knew, I don't think I would have taken this journey. I wonder if any of you have had if-only moments in life. I wonder if some of you have had these if-only moments. If only I knew what he was going to be like, I wouldn't have said, I do. That's an if-only. If only I knew what my job situation was going to look like, I wouldn't have bought the new car in January. If only I knew my teenage daughter was going to be like this, I would have done this. If only I would known we were going to be in a pandemic, I wouldn't have bought what. If only. And, and here's the trap with hindsight. Can I tell you there's a trap with hindsight, though? The trap with the hindsight is that we're always comparing the past to the present. And whenever you do that, it will stop you in your tracks. Because listen, your present troubles will never compare to your past glories. And so hindsight will trap you from going forward into the future. we got to be careful with hindsight. Because here's what I know, what God's word says is in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, is that we walk by faith and not by what? We don't walk by hindsight. We we walk by faith, which means what? We're still moving forward. I'm not going to look back to Egypt. Even if the desert is uncertain, and even if I'm scared about it, and even if I feel like we might run out, I'm going to look forward because we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to look forward with foresight. I'm not going to look back with hindsight. I'm not going to go through life looking in the rearview mirror when I got a huge dash in front of me, a huge windshield right in front of me. And so a lot of us, maybe like the Israelites, We feel like I should go back to Egypt. This is what they say. I should go back to Egypt. Can I tell you something, though, that I want you to understand about this? Because I know it's painful. I know the season that we're in is really painful. But here's the dangerous thing about whenever we kind of go, well, if only we had. Here's the thing. Don't ever compare today's pain with yesterday's provision. Whenever you compare today's pain with yesterday's provision, it will always come short. You will always resent the moment you're in. If only I had known. This is what they did. And pain caused them to lose their perspective. Did you notice that? They said this. If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in Egypt. Wait, wait, wait. If only we would have rather died than been on a diet. I would have, we would have rather died. Here's what they said, and you can tell this is what's funny to me, because it seems like they got hangry. Hannah, do you ever get hangry? Yeah, I get hangry. You don't want to be around me when I get hangry. It seemed like they got hangry in that moment. And here's what happens, and this is the danger of comparing our current pain to our past provision, is that we tend to, uh, it's called, um, we tend to create revisionist history. You know what revisionist history is? It's when you rewrite history through a new perspective. Pain will always cause you to rewrite history through a different perspective. Here's what they said. If only we had been back there. You know why? Because back in Egypt, here's what they said. All we did was sit around pots of meat. All we did was sit around. Really? That's all you did. 
You sat around, you had pots of cod, and, and, and you had ham. Well, no, you didn't have ham. You were Jewish. So you had turkey. You, had, you sat around pots of meat. That's what, that's what they said. In their minds, all they could remember was sitting around the pots of meat. They couldn't remember being enslaved, forced into hard labor, crying out to the Lord, saying, God, when are you going to free us from this miserable ex- existence? This is what pain does is it causes us to live in hindsight, and then we revisionize history. But, but that's, that's not what God has for us. I want to talk about his provision. Look, look what happens. It goes on in verse 4 and 5. Here's what God's response was to all this. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down from heaven. I'm going to rain down bread from heaven. Maybe I'll underline bread. I'm going to rain down bread from heaven for you. And the people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, here's, I want you to underline this next phrase, I will test them. I want you to underline that. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in. And that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. That is so they didn't have to go out during the Sabbath. God says in this moment, here's one thing I need you to understand about God. Okay, and I'm not saying this because some preacher told me one day or because the Bible tells me, and that's why I'm telling you because of my life experience, because I have seen the faithfulness of God. Let me just say this about provision, and that is this. God will always meet your need with his provision. God will always, I, I, I will stand by that. God's word declares it. My life experience has proven it. God, listen, will always meet your needs through his provision. I love the way Paul said it, right? My God shall supply all your needs according to his glorious riches. God is faithful. I don't know if in this season where we're in the desert, in the lack, and we wonder, God, is there enough? God, are we going to make it? God, how am I going to get through this? What God wants to do is show himself as provider. Last week we saw he was Jehovah Rapha, our healer. This week he wants to show us he's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. God said to him, okay, guys, you're upset. I am going to make it rain dough. Woo. Listen, do you know this, Tucker? Before Drake ever tried to make it rain in the club, God made it rain in the desert. Come on. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Just look it up. God said, I'll make it rain bread for them in the desert. That's what's interesting. I I love this. I'm I'm looking at this, how God said that, fine, I, I will make it rain down bread. And then he said, and I will test them with this. Now, now we said this last week, that anytime we get into a hard place, a desert wilderness type experience, it's two things that God uses it for, right? He uses it to test our faith and to show his power. The same situation, but different with the water, now we are with the food. And God says that I'm going to make it rain bread. That's so interesting. I'm going to make it rain down bread. God is saying, I am your provider, and I'm going to provide for you in this season supernaturally. And then he said something that caught my attention. Pastor Russ, you've never seen this. I know it. So you need to underline it. And this this is so important. Okay, this is, I'm I'm going back to this. He said in this verse, in verse 4, he said, in this way, I will test them. In this way... I will test them. What if God's provision is not just intended to be a blessing? That's how we often see it as Christ followers. But what if it's also intended to be a test? I bet you never thought of it that way. What if God's provision was also, most of us, when we as Christ followers and we pray for God's provision and we look for it to be a blessing, what if God's intending for it to be a test? Here's what I'm saying, okay? Like, what if the job that God has given to you 
was something he opened the door for you so he would see if you would honor him in the workplace. What if the gifts and the abilities that God has instilled inside of you, you know the things you do, and you're so smart, and your intellect and your ability to do things. What if God gave those to you? That's his provision to you, but it also comes with a test to see if you'll serve God in it. What if the finances that God has already blessed you with is a provision from God, but he's given you a certain amount, and he's first testing you to see if you will honor him with the first fruits? What I'm trying to say is, what if God's provision is a test? If it is a test, can I ask you a question? Would you pass? Would we pass the test? You see, most of the time, we're obsessed in this country with blessing because we already have provision. Most of you watching me right now you don't have a question as to whether or not you have a meal later. Most of us that are watching, I'm not saying everybody, there's some that may be struggling. If you're struggling, can I just tell you, we would love to help you as a church. You can go to our website on the response page. There's a needs form. We, we've helped families. We, we want to do that. But here's what I'm saying. Most of us, we've already received more provision than we ever recognized. The question is, would we pass the test? Here's how Jesus said it in Luke chapter 16, verse 10. I don't want you to just think this is an Old Testament thing. This is a Jesus thing too. Jesus said it this way. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. It sounds like a test to me. If you are faithful with the little that God has given to you, then you might see the blessing. If you're faithful with the provision, then God can open the door with the blessing. What's interesting to me is that the reference throughout Scripture of God's blessing always seems to be him pouring out of heaven. I'll pour out a blessing so great you don't have room enough to contain it. That's the blessing of God. And what's interesting here in this story is now God is referencing provision from reigning from heaven. What are we doing with the provision? That's the question in the season, what he's given to us. And here's the thing. You you can either be a container. We like to say it like that around here. Pastor Russ, you just talked about this in one of your messages. We either can be a container where we think everything we have is for us, and we store it up, and we save it up, and we stockpile it up for ourselves, or we can decide to be a conduit through which God wants to pour out not just provision, but if it'll flow through you, God says, I'll give you more than provision. I'll give you blessing in the season because you're allowing it to be a conduit of what I want to do in the season. Are you a conduit or a container? Which are you going to be in this season? And God wants to teach us in a season like this to look for the provision. And he says, I'm going to provide for you, but I'll also be a test. That rocked my world. Because I, I think God is my provider, and I know the promises of his word And so I claim those. I know what Jesus said in Matthew 6 about God providing all of our needs if we will seek first his kingdom, his righteousness. I know all that, but I never really considered that God would use it as a test in my life. And so here's what happens in verse 13, if you'll skip down, because God wants to meet your needs in a specific way. Verse 13 says this, that evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what did they say? What is it? That's weird. What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses had to tell them. Moses said to them, it's the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. I I love how uh, that evening, the very same day that they complained about not having provision, God brought quail, small little bird, 
That's how we know for sure it wasn't Sunday because God brought Chick-fil-A and they would have been closed on Sunday. And so God brings them some chicken. Okay, it's kind of like chicken, whatever. God brings them that the same day. God was trying to show, you feel like you don't have provision? God says, I have provision every single day. That evening, quail came. So God said, we'll start this off with a real meal. And then the next day, this was so fascinating to me. The next day, dew. When the dew came, and dried up, it turned into something new. The dew brought something new. Now, here's what's interesting to me. God said, I'm going to make it rain bread. But then the dew showed up. What's interesting is that in a desert, it almost never rains. But God had provided another source of moisture for the plants the animals and the things in the desert to keep them alive in that kind of climate, it was dew. Dew is a common thing in the desert. What's interesting to me is that God uses something very common and natural to bring something supernatural. In other words, it's a picture. God said, I provide for everything that lives in the desert, and I will provide for you in the desert season. And so God uses dew to bring something new. And, and I, I just imagine this in this moment where, where the dew dries up and then all of a sudden what's left is these flakes like frost. That's what it says. They're looking around at it. I ain't never seen anything like that. These flakes like frost. And I'm just picturing Tucker that they go and then they pick it up and they tried it. You know what they said when they tried it? They're great. That's, come on, man, that's. Heavenly frosted flakes. Come on, are you following me or not? Come on, you are laughing at home. Hey, listen, in our home, frosted flakes is a staple. If you got frosted flakes in the kitchen, in the pantry, put it in the chat right now. Raise your hand. You've got it. God gave them heavenly frosted flakes. They had never had frosted flakes before. And they looked at each other. Here's what they really said. They said, what is it? What is that? This... We had never had this before. They said, what is it? It didn't look like any bread they had ever eaten before. It didn't look like Wonder Bread. It didn't look like what they expected. Can I just tell you, sometimes God works in ways that we do not expect. They expected to get Wonder Bread or they expected to get Sarah Lee's Honey Wheat. They expected sourdough. Instead, they end up with Frosted Flakes. Sometimes God does miracles in our life that we never expect because it comes in a form that is different than we thought it would be. It reminds me of Naaman. You remember the story of Naaman in 2 Kings 5? Naaman in this story, he's the commander of the Aramean army who's enemies with the Israelites and he has leprosy. And he has a servant girl that they actually stole from Israel, a slave. And she said, you ought to go to Israel. There's a prophet there that could heal you, Elisha. And so Naaman goes to Elisha's house and knocks on the door. And Elisha doesn't even come to the door. Elisha sends his servant because God already told him who was coming to the door and his problem and what to do about it. And so Elisha sends a servant and tells Naaman, go take a dip in the Jordan seven times and your flesh will be restored and made like new. But he leaves angry and mad and is not even going to do it. Do you know why? He, did, he leaves because he said, I thought... The prophet would come wave his hand over the spot and heal it. And he almost missed the miracle. He almost missed the provision because it came in a different form than he thought it would. Do you understand what I'm trying to say in this situation? That they expected bread raining from heaven. They're waiting for droplets to bring dough down to them. Looking up and God brings it through dew, a different form of condensation, and through frosted flakes on the ground. And they said, what in the world is this? What I'm saying is sometimes it's easy to miss God's provision in every different season of life because it always looks different. It's not what they expected. In fact, this was, this was fascinating to me because in Numbers chapter 11, I'll just read this to you. Here's a description of it. Numbers 11, 7 through 8, it says that the manna was like coriander seed and it looked like resin. And the people went around gathering it 
and then ground it in a hand mill or crushed it in a mortar. And they cooked it in a pot or made it into loaves and it tasted like something made with olive oil. Here's what's fascinating to me. The people expected bread and they got manna. They expected one version of provision and they got something that looked completely different. This is why I want us to understand because it could be that God has given you a job that you didn't even want as a form of provision that would be enough to bring in what you need in that season of your life. And many of us are complaining about the very provision that God had brought into our lives because it's not what we envision, but maybe what God's doing is he's going to meet your need in that season, and it might be different in the next season, but we got to learn to recognize the provision of God. Sometimes, can I just say it, we don't even recognize the provision of God. Sometimes I, I think we miss it. We're saying, what is it? I miss it all the time. I really felt convicted by this. Because I thought, how many times am I still looking up to heaven going, God, I'm waiting for the next stimulus check. God, I'm waiting for the next miracle to drop out of the sky. And God is saying, why are you looking up? I got dew on the ground. I've got provision for you. You just didn't recognize what it looked like. Why? Because it came in the form of a seed. I was looking for a check. God gave a seed. I was looking for a bag of groceries in front of my tent. But instead, God gave them seed. Manna was like coriander seed. That they had to work it. I think sometimes we pray for God's provision, but we never anticipate that it will come into a form where we have to work it. Come on, I, I know Pastor Russ, he spends an hour every day praying for big muscles. Every day, an hour every day praying for big muscles. It might be that God's not just going to miraculously give you big muscles, but he might give you enough money to pay $10 a month to go to Planet Fitness to work out your muscles. Come on. What I'm trying to say is that maybe God's provision is going to come into a form in the season that you're going to have to work. What have you been praying for that God's going to do and maybe God's going to show up and do it in a different way? form than you thought and you might have to work it a little bit you might be praying for bigger revenues in your business because of all the challenges and God isn't going to just drop sales in your lap but he might put a strategy in your mind that if you work the strategy it will turn into results one day what I'm saying is that God has provision for us that we often miss because we're waiting for a check and God says but I gave you a seed I'm just waiting to go will you plant Will you work it? I want now, God says, I'll give you a seed. And sometimes we just, we don't like it because we don't understand the potential of a seed. There's so much potential in one seed. Did you know that? I love this quote by Robert Schuller, uh, uh, an old preacher. And he said this. He said, anyone can count the seeds in an apple, but only God can count the number of apples in a seed. I want you to think about that for a moment. Anybody can count the seeds in an apple. You can cut an apple open and count six seeds, whatever. But if you were to plant those seeds and it produces trees that give you a harvest of apples over and over again, you see only God knows the potential of the provision that he's already given to you. And if you're sitting around waiting for Wonder Bread, it might look a little bit different in the season. It might be the job that God has given to you that you don't love, but it could be that he's given you an opportunity to work extra hours to help make ends meet in the season. What is it? This isn't the bread I thought. What, what is it? Well, God, maybe God gave you frosted flakes. Here's what it said. I don't know if you guys caught what, it, what they did in Numbers 11. You can go back and look at it, but it says they had to gather it. And then they had to grind it. They had to mill it. They had to cook it. They had to bake it. 
I thought we'd just get bread. And God says, I gave you the ingredients that you needed to make bread. But I also gave you ingredients with so much potential that you could make more than just bread. They made things in the pot. They made loaves in the pan. They made all kinds of, God gave them the grain to make more than you could imagine. You know, I, I, I looked up because I was just so curious. Are there different recipes for Frosted Flakes? What can you do with Frosted Flakes other than pour some milk on it? That's great. I went to this one website that had 19 different recipes for Frosted Flakes. Peanut butter, no bake, Frosted Flakes cookies. Hello, that sounded, I know you're with me, thank you. I, I just, I, I wrote down some of them. Frosted Flake honey chicken. Frosted Flakes French toast. Are you getting hungry, Tucker? I hear your stomach from here. Frosted Flakes puppy chow. Ooh, that would be so good. I'm making myself hungry. You get hungry today. Listen, I don't know if they had puppy chow. They maybe didn't have puppy chow there. I'm getting hungry. But I do believe that God gave them provision that most of them said, what is that? Because they had to work it. In this season, can I tell you, God's provision might come in the form of a seed. And it might not look like what you expect it to look like. It might be that God will open the door. He'll open the door for you to, to be able to work extra hours. He'll, he'll, he'll give you wisdom on how you can reduce expenses. I don't know, but here's what I do know. God is faithful and God's provision will always meet your needs. It might not be everything you wanted. It might not be riches and blessing beyond measure. It could be God's going to start with the provision of a seed. It might not look like a harvest. It might look like a seed. And he's saying, will you work it? Will you work it? I think about the Apostle Paul. He, he prayed for provision once. He said, God, I've got this thorn in my side. I got this affliction that won't go away. And he said, I prayed over and over. God, take this away. God, and here's what God, God didn't bring the healing that he prayed for, but God gave him provision in the package of grace. God didn't take it away, but God gave him something else. He gave him grace so that Paul said, I learned that God said, my grace is sufficient for you in the season that in your weakness, I am made strong. And sometimes the provision that we're praying for is going to come in a different form. And it might not look like what you think it's going to look like, but God is faithful and he will always show up and give you exactly what you need. It might look a little different in this season. He prayed for healing. He received grace. Some of you today, you're, you're in a season where you're, God, I need provision. I don't know if you've ever considered this, but every miracle that God ever does is a miracle of provision. God, I need healing. That's a provision. God, we need finances. That's provision. God, I need wisdom. That's provision. God, I need life. That's provision. Every miracle that God does is a miracle of provision because he is your provider. And I think what God wants to teach us today and he wants to teach us in this season is how to receive his provision. How did they have to receive his provision? Do you know? How'd they have to receive his provision, Eddie? Were you paying attention? They had to receive his provision. He was lost. He didn't know. They had to receive his provision every day. Every day. They had to receive his provision daily. God said every day, go out and collect enough for that day. And here's, here's what happened. Let me, let me close the story out. Verses 19 and 20. Moses told them, he said to them, no one is to keep any of it till morning. You're going to collect it one day. You're going to cook. You're going to use what you need, but you use it up. You don't store it up. Verse 20, it says, however, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it till morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. Why? God was teaching them a very important rhythm of provision. And I think God wants to teach us this rhythm 
right now in this season. You see, I, I want blessing and I want the promised land and we want to get on the other side of this. But right now there are some things that I am convinced that God is trying to teach me. There are some things that God is trying to instill in me in the desert experience. And it is a daily trusting of God for provision. Every single day. That's why in a pandemic people lose their mind and they start hoarding everything. That's why we had a toilet paper shortage in the middle of a respiratory issue. It's because everybody is losing their mind and we're stockpiling. And God says, no, 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 no. That's not the rhythm for my children. That's what you do when you're afraid God won't show up tomorrow. But when you trust in God right now and today, God says, I will give you what you need today. You don't worry about tomorrow. God's been teaching me this through the whole season. But today, that's why Jesus said, this is the way we pray. God, give me today my daily bread. God wants to teach you and me the rhythm. And so you know what God has had to do and rewire my mind instead of saying, if only I had known, I wouldn't have maybe started building this building. God has been reworking in my mind and my heart and saying, no, wait a minute, God, you called us to this. You opened the door for this. You are providing for this. I'm just going to trust you and I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. I'm not going to worry about the next season. I'm going to just say, God, give me today what I need. Some of you, that's your prayer. That's what you need to pray to God today. You see, fear will cause you to look into the future and say, but what if we go there and we don't have enough? But faith will say, I trust God today in this season to provide and meet my needs today. And that's what God's showing me. And I don't know, for some of you, maybe that's what God's going to teach you to rely upon him. Would you just... Wherever you are, would you bow your heads? Let me pray for you. We're in this together. Let's pray. Let's ask God for to see his provision. God, I just want to confess to you that I've, I've allowed fear to even want to take me back to Egypt. God, I'm here today saying that I... I trust your provision. God, so far it hasn't looked like what I thought it would look like. But I pray that that the story of manna, what is it? God would, would show me that you are a God who provides in maybe a different form than we ever anticipated. So I pray right now by the Spirit of God, some of you are praying with me. God's going to begin to reveal to you things today and this week that you never realized was his provision. The person he brought into your life, the job that he's given you, the the finances, they might be tight, but that's provision for the season. Every season, God's provision looks different, but if you will be faithful to honor God, you see, it's a test. God wants to know, will you trust me daily? God, would you enable us to do that? Listen, as we're praying, maybe some of you have never trusted in Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Today is the day to invite him into your life. He wants to fill your life. Jesus said, I am the bread that has come down from heaven. He said, whoever partakes of me, eats of this bread, who receives Jesus by faith, will never go hungry again. Some of you, maybe where you are right now in your life, your soul is hungry. It's longing for something that this world cannot satisfy. We're chasing it in so many different things, but God intended to meet your spiritual need through Jesus, the bread of life. And today, if you will just receive him, if you will just receive him, he is, Jesus is your provision for eternal life. He died a sinner's death, though he was perfect, on a cross to, to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin. And maybe some of you, at one point, you will trust it in God, but maybe through all this, you've walked away, you've wandered away, or you're new to this, and you're saying, I, I, need, I need to trust God every day. It begins right now. It begins in a decision to say, I'm yours, Jesus. Come into my life. And if that's you, would you just pray this prayer with me? 
Today, I invite you, Jesus, to be the Lord of my life. I receive you by faith. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. From this moment forward, I'm trusting you. I give you my life, and I trust it into your hands. God, give me what I need every single day. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's thank God for his word today.